What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network for Guess What Happened? Something magical is on its way. Oh, the cold card Mark II with the greatest feature of them all. Listen to that. Clicky buttons. Yes, we finally made it. Clicky buttons on the cold card. The one and only issue of the Mark I version is now solved. We now finally have real clicky buttons. So Piers, put your money badger hat on and join me in the Satoshi run to reclaim your keys and your Bitcoin. Uh, because today we will do the unboxing of this very, very awesome cold card. Uh, and not just will this be an unboxing video, but it will also be a, a giveaway video. Because this one here, specifically a fresh new cold card coin kite uh, or coin kite cold card, uh, we will give away NDK and I of the World Crypto Network. Uh, we will do to any open source contributor who has contributed to something beautiful in Bitcoin. Uh, and so if you would like to be part of this, stay tuned to the end of the video where we actually discuss a little bit more on how you can be part of this and how you can win this brand new cold card wallet. So, uh, as you see, um, well, and this is actually the second attempt uh, to do this video because the first time, well, unfortunately, uh, the entire uh, thing kind of blew up and sound was not recorded. Yay, Google, thank you. Uh, so, uh, what we will do then today uh, is, again, well, somehow rehash what we've already done uh, offline though. So, uh, okay, the really cool thing here uh, with cold card uh, is the bag in it of itself. This is a high security device and many, many things have been taken into account uh, for making this shipping experience not really prioritizing for beauty, but prioritizing for security and making sure that you get the hardware wallet that you deserve, a good one and one that has not been tampered with. So as you might see, right, uh, this here has a bunch of cool things. Well, first and foremost, that's CoinKite right in there. And of course, don't trust, verify. That's the entire stick here. Right? That is what we want to do. And it also has, you might see this here a bit better, all this green stuff here is the Bitcoin Genesis block. Uh, so very nice bag in and of itself. And of course, it's see-through. And that is really good because then you can easily see if someone has tampered with this device uh, already while it is still in the bag. And that is very, very useful. Uh, but even better is what you have up top right here. It is a temper evident seal. Uh, and this actually, right now you see it's, it's uh, intact, right? It's all uh, one color red. Uh, and it is not yet ripped apart. Uh, and that now, together with it being no holes in here, you can be sure that the wallet has not been taken out of this device yet. And that is really nice. But then if you start peeling this off here, and if you start ripping this off, well, it will look, and now the old bag, like this really, really, really messy, right? Uh, so once you have ripped this apart, you will never be able to put it back again. Uh, and this means that this bag is forever broken, right? Very good, very secure. Because again, now you can be sure that this is your hardware wallet. Uh, and then also here uh, on this one specifically, uh, this here is the one that I've already tested and thus I can show you uh, this QR code uh, and the little number right here, Z0003130. And guess what? This is a unique identifier of this bag of itself. And the really cool thing is that it is hard coded into the cold card itself, uh, which means then uh, into the secure element. So the very first time where you set this cold card up, it will show exactly these numbers. And then you know that during the transport from the factory in Canada, to your doorstep. Uh, the device itself has not been tampered with. Really, really cool. Uh, so this just solves a lot of the issues with supply chain attacks and man in the middle attacks. Uh, and I really, really like it for that sense. So you get uh, in the back, or actually, you know what? Uh, let, me, let me share you the screen uh, with what you actually get here in this really awesome package of the cold card wallet. Uh, it, it really has a bunch of well, really cool features. Uh, 
where, where is it? Here, use your documentation. And then the quick start guide. Uh, and here you see it again. Uh, high security uh, here bag. And you get a cold card sticker, right? Uh, the one that I'm holding right here. Don't trust, verify. Uh, you get, of course, the cold card itself and this little monomic backup paper. Uh, and let me just read uh, for you what actually is being said here. Uh, important warning, never show this card to anyone. Anyone who can copy the words on this card will have complete access to all funds in your wallet. If you suspect someone has seen this card, create a new wallet immediately and move your funds over. Never share any part of the words on this card with another party for any reason whatsoever. The pin code is not required to recover only the 24 words. Anti-phishing code words will be different for each cold card. Learn more at coldcardwallet.com. Uh, so this again here, uh, really nice to have this backup piece of paper. Um, but in the next video, we will talk much more about the monomics, the passphrases and the backup opportunities here of the cold card. Very, very nice. Um, so yeah, I would say, let's look here at this beauty, the cold card Mark II. And of course, like, it doesn't look much different but do you hear that? Clicky buttons. Yes. Because this is the old Mark I version. And you hear that? No clicky. No, just a touchpad. And although the idea is really cool, um, rather cheap to produce, easy software upgradability, and it works pretty well in Canada and America, here over in Europe, unfortunately, because the grid is so volatile and, and like different, like I don't know, some stuff, it just doesn't work. Uh, at least uh, if, or well, you can somewhat work around. If you have a battery pack, the really short cable, then this uh, Mark One hardware still, is pretty good and uh, it was still pretty usable for me, but of course, much better to now have the main and I would say pretty much the only flaw of the hardware wallet, fixed clicky buttons, so excited. I've never been more excited about clicky real buttons. Awesome stuff. Um, so yeah, but, but let's look into it. So the keyboard, right? Um, numbers zero from one till nine. Uh, and again, oh, click. I, I cannot stop clicking them. <laughs> we also have the five being the point up, eight being point down, uh, that is nine being point left, and uh, seven being point, well, well, seven being left, nine being right. Uh, so this is how you then uh, control yourself in the menu. Uh, really cool. And we have here the check mark, which of course is the OK and the advancement of the menu. And we have the X, uh, which is the cancel uh, and uh, going out of the menu. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, we also have right here a display uh, that is rather large and it actually fits five lines uh, of words here in and that is plenty enough uh, to show pretty much all you need to know. I think even it shows the, the extended public key uh, all in one window. Uh, definitely it shows the address that you're assigning here. Um, so very cool device, uh, very usable uh, here with the large black and white display. Also up front, we have two LED lights, one for being genuine. This is when the hardware, sorry, when the firmware is here on this device, uh, then, uh, and it has been signed with all the correct keys, then it will light as genuine. But if a new firmware has been introduced to this, regardless if the build has been signed by the signatures, uh, then, or well, signed by the keys, uh, then the red caution light will pop up and you will know that you have to be extra careful uh, because a new firmware has been introduced. Well, of course, you might have been the one to upload the firmware on your cold card, but then you can bless the firmware. And don't worry, we'll talk about this much more in one of the upcoming videos. There is also now, and that is new for uh, the Mark II in comparison to the Mark I, uh, on here the right side uh, is another LED that shows the SD card. Uh, when it is active. Uh, so that is very nice. And well, already teasing it, this right here is one of the coolest features for the cold card, a SD card slot. And you can do several cool things with this little SD card slot. Uh, well, first, you can on the industrial grade SD cards that are also sh uh, shipped uh, or sold at the cold card store, you can actually get a uh, backup 
of your Menomic seed in a high, high security SD card. And of course you encrypt that and everything. So really nice uh, to have this uh, as a backup mechanism in addition to the paper and steel backups that you can make. Just having SD card with digital backups, why not? Uh, but of course the main feature uh, and what makes this a cold card quite literally is that you can communicate the so-called partially signed Bitcoin transaction from your laptop to your cold card over SD cards. Really, really cool. So basically, how does this work? On the software wallet, for example, Wasabi wallet, right? You generate the partially signed Bitcoin transaction by specifying the inputs and outputs of the transaction. With some additional PSPT stuff, then you save that file onto the SD card on your laptop. You unplug the SD card, you plug it in here, and then you see exactly what you're assigning on the little uh, display right here. And when you sign it, you then transfer the signed Bitcoin transaction from the or over the SD card from the cold card to your laptop, to your full model, to then broadcast it to the entire peer-to-peer -peer network. Very nice, very secure, uh, and of course, cold as it should be. Uh, so if you do it correctly, this thing will never ever touch uh, a, a device that is connected to the internet. But you might be wondering, how do I then power this device? Well, good question, you ask. <laughs> and that is right here, the micro USB uh, uh, type B, I think. Uh, just a regular uh, old USB phone charger, uh, not the USB type C that they use for the most recent phones, uh, because you don't need much, right? This is first and foremost a, pow a power only USB. Uh, so, or designed, uh, well, it, it, you can use it as a power only USB. So for example, I have over here just a regular phone uh, charger, right? That, that I then have the regular little uh, USB type uh, B, a micro USB device uh, that I can plug into here, the cold card right up here. And that will give it enough power in order to sustain it and do all the signing and so on. But of course, uh, more power to the user. And you can use this cold card as a, somewhat of a medium cold storage, uh, as any other hardware wallet like Ledger or Trezor uh, is doing right now. You can directly plug the cold card from here uh, to your laptop and then communicate not just the power, but actually the PSPT directly from your Wasabi wallet to your hardware wallet. Uh, and in a way that, of course, other information can be transferred as well. And although there are many hardware and security software checks on the cold card itself, it's much more risky to communicate or to have a direct cable with bi-directional communication from your cold card to your hardware uh, to, or to your laptop that is connected to the internet. And of course, the beauty of the cold card is that you do not have to do this. You have the option of going SD card only. And that is really, really, really cool. And I really like that. Uh, so awesome, awesome design. Um, but of course, right, if you want to have it more convenient, so to say, without transferring the SD card, which you will see in one of the next videos, it's pretty easy to do and very intuitive. Highly recommend of going the full cold card way. Um, yeah, okay, a couple other things that we have here on the front that is new, a new design feature right here, really hard to see um, through the plastic, but right here is a little arrow that points to the hardware secure module that stores the entropy used to generate the keys, right? And the really cool thing is that it now says shoot here. Uh, so if you want to destroy this device for good, uh, like physically destroy it, take a AK-47 or a Colt or a Liberator 3D printed gun and blast it right here. <laughs> and then the, the computer chip will physically be destroyed and then it will just be impossible uh, to ever recover the keys again. Of course, you can also software wipe this thing. And because it's a hardware secure module, actually the software deletion uh, is provable and rather secure. But of course, having the pleasure of shooting a cold card is priceless. And very nice now to know where exactly you have to drill a hole. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. And to the background, uh, what well, we see, uh, it is made in Canada. Uh, right here. Uh, so the uh, the design has been come up in Canada. The hardware parts are produced here in Canada, custom made actually. Um, and uh, it's also assembled in Canada and shipped from the same factory. 
So the supply chain is minimized here. And NVK has spoken about uh, the things that they've considered uh, on doing with their supply chain on the World Crypto Network in one of the previous episodes uh, here. Uh, so go back and, and check that out. Uh, but yeah, definitely really, really cool uh, to have a device that is uh, handled by really one uh, entrepreneurial venture and not a huge supply chain. And of course, you know, the main difference, this here is the Mark I, ah, oh, come on, focus, Mark I Revision E. But here we have Mark II Revision 1 or Revision A. Uh, so, of course, next major upgrade uh, and Revision A because, well, it's the first one of that type. Uh, really, really cool first batch. Um, I ordered it the second that it was announced because I knew that real clicky buttons would fix all like the, the, the tiny problems that I have with Mark I. Uh, Mark II has fixed just by this feature. Clicky buttons, yes. Oh, I never thought I would be so excited for clicky buttons, but the cold card has managed. <laughs> um, there are also, now maybe jumping back into the screen share, uh, there are a couple cool things um, here, hardware features, uh, that are new with the Mark II versus the Mark I. Uh, so better power management um, and ESD protection, uh, so more security, always good. And the power manager mainly also comes from the power savings by removing the touch key processing. Um, Nice idea would have been really, really cool to get this up and running, um, but unfortunately just, well, prototypes sometimes don't work out, especially if you start shipping them. Uh, but now uh, with real buttons, much less power, uh, less upgradability via software, right, because it's mechanical now, uh, but hopefully much more resiliency more physical protection on the sensitive traces which connect the secure element to the main micro. Uh, that is really, really cool just to have a more well thought out a design of the chip itself and, and the motherboard. Really cool. A boot room security improvements, including updates to foil and or detect man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, really cool. There were some really ma minor issues with, uh, with that in Mark 1. Uh, and they have fixed this distant attack uh, that, by the way, if you had long pins, uh, was never exploitable. Uh, the shoot this marker for more effective device destruction. <laughs> and the activity LED, a green one, for the micro SD card slot. Uh, so as you can see, just another couple improvements to the already pretty damn good Mark I. I mean, seriously, the hardware itself was like, I mean, the chips were near perfect. And really the only thing that was bothering me was that damn keyboard. And other than that, it was beautiful. But now we have the same basic architecture with some minor improvements on top together with clicky buttons. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so Pierce, uh, this has been it. This has been the unbagging of the awesome cold card. Don't trust, verify. Run your node and hold your keys. Be a good money badger and don't ask for permission to spend your money, but hold the keys to the kingdom yourself in your own hands. And the cold card is a beautiful tool with that, uh, especially with the upcoming hardware wallet interface in Bitcoin Core that is already implemented in Wasabi. The communication from Wasabi to cold card all run on your own full noddle. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, awesome work to NVK uh, for getting this out there. Um, so yeah, we talked about the the cool uh, design decisions here for the back. Uh, we talked about the Minomic backup paper that you get, of course, stickers, because well, why not? And all of the hardware wall details of this great device. Um, so let's talk about how you can get specifically uh, this hardware wallet right here in this sealed bag. And as you might know, I've like purposefully covered up uh, the, the numbers. Uh, so here that when uh, I would send you this, all the security features uh, of this bag are still intact. And you can actually know that I have not man in the middle attacked you here. Uh, so really, really cool. Um, so yeah, one additional, or how, how can you get that? Well. I thought about how we can do these giveaways and I don't want to do another one of those where it's like, oh, like and retweet and we are going to randomly choose someone who then gets the gift. No, that's nonsense. We are actually going to reward those that deserve it. So 
uh, the only way for you to be part of this lottery is if you already have contributed to a open source project. Okay, uh, this is then a thank you gift from the World Crypto Network and of course, NVK Rodolfo at CoinKite and ColdCard uh, to say thank you for all that you have done uh, of contributing to an event or project. So that can be of course any software developer that works for Bitcoin Core or any other open source wallet or um, maybe BitPay uh, or CypherNode or there are a thousand and one really, really good hardware wallet or open source projects um, on the coding side, right? Uh, but we also have, for example, the Noddle, which is a open source hardware. So if you're involved in this project, perfect, uh, yay. Um, and also though, uh, it's not just for those developing, it's also for those educating. Uh, so if you have a open source podcast or video show where, where you teach others uh, about this stuff, or if you organize a meetup where anyone can join you and, and where you teach them physically in location, these are all open source ventures that are worth uh, to, to support and to give thanks and gratitude. Uh, and that will only be the one part here. Uh, so there are many open source contributors. Thank you to all of them. But we also want to, of course, make sure that you understand why you actually need it. Uh, so if you give me a compelling reason why you actually need to have the hardware wallet, the cold cart, in order to securely manage your private keys and to keep them secure from all those malicious people trying to steal from you 24-7, uh, well, then reply down below either in the YouTube comments or on Twitter, uh, reach out uh, to me or to NVK and the best answer is going to win. Uh, there's not going to be really a, <laughs> a, a clear process. Uh, we're just going to choose whoever uh, we think is worthy. Uh, so if you think that you are worthy of getting your hands on the very, very awesome cold card wallet, this one right here, uh, then hit me up on Twitter, on YouTube. You know where to find us. Peers, this is only the first video of many to come here on the World Crypto Network uh, and already uh, of many that, that, well, that have been uh, produced here on the WCN. Um, let's screen share one more time. Uh, and we see here uh, th that there are many playlists and many videos uh, already. And we have a cold card playlist where we have four interviews with NVK Rodolfo, uh, as well as an unbagging of the cold card Mark 1. Uh, and this, uh, we will now, with this new Mark II, uh, and especially with the HWI integration coming and with a lot more infrastructure built around, uh, we will then continue to producing these videos and to give you clear step-by-step -step instructions on how you can get the best out of your hardware wallet. Uh, Piers, it's been a pleasure, as always, talking to you here on the World Crypto Network. And thank you very much for joining and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.